welcome to a typical Australian backyard where we have our clothesline here. And this isn't a video on how to hang out your washing, it's actually a video on uh, a bit of a budget way to create a driving net in your backyard without buying a pre-configured driving net from a supplier. Uh, now here in Australia we have a bit of a shortage of, of uh, cheap golf products. When you go on YouTube you can find any number of videos on, on products from Amazon and, and Costco and uh, Walmart and so on and they, they seem to be fairly good cheap products um, but they're always based in America and you have a, a large import cost to get them into Australia <clears throat> and then the products in Australia are quite expensive for what they are even your cheapest most budget products are you know around that $150 Australian which isn't isn't a cheap amount of money so we're always looking for a budget alternative and a bit of a do-it-yourself alternative and I, I think I'm onto something here uh, that might work with clothesline so let me show you a couple of products that I have picked up we have the Optima, let me get my shadow out of the way, it's a really sunny day here today. So this is an, an Optima um, practice mat, it's got a sort of like a short and a long grass on it and a couple of built in rubber tees here. So I've hit a couple of balls off this so far but this will be a bit of a, <clears throat> an overview or review of this mat as well. Um, here we have a doormat, this costs $4. Oh, so this optimum mat, this was about $55, I'll throw it on the screen anyway, about $55 Australian. This, this uh, jute sort of doormat here, that was $4 from Bunnings, which is just a warehouse store we have here. And then this little bundle here, this is a Haverford uh, practice net, and it's just the net only, it's not the frame. So this comes from a company called Haverford. They advertise a lot on Facebook and their reviews are always really good. So I just got the three meter by three meter net and we're gonna give that a try out as well. And we just have the clubs here ready to go. So the idea is we put the net up on the clothesline because the structure's already there and we throw our practice mat on the ground, see what happens. So I'll just set that one up now. All right, there we have it. The net is just suspended on the existing clothesline. I've just used the clothes pegs, we've got some stainless steel clothes pegs that are quite strong and they seem to be holding it nice and firmly on one of the lines. We have our hitting mat down here on the ground and then we have our mat for our feet and this serves two purposes. This is so that the grass doesn't get uh, torn up by you know constant uh, swinging and it also brings your feet up a little bit leveler with the height that the, the mat raises the ball. So instead of the ball being set too high, this sort should bring you sort of to a similar level. What I was thinking of doing as well with this mat was maybe um, gluing it down to like a piece of ply or timber as well to give it, because um, uh, I'm assuming as you sort of turn your feet it will, might bunch up a little bit. Uh, but if it was glued down on a piece of like flat timber, it would stop it bunching up a little bit. So let's hit a few balls into here. I'm gonna grab a seven iron. I probably wouldn't recommend hitting a wedge because you might like lift that thing up too high and hit guttering or fly your roof. Um, but seven iron, you know, eight iron, seven iron down should be absolutely fine. I just got these clubs too. These are, this is pretty exciting. So these are um, Wilson FG Tours. Not a blade, but they're a semi, um, they're forged iron, a lot more of a uh, Harder to hit iron, but definitely more professionally inclined. So just um, while I'm here, I'll show you this hitting mat as well. Here we have um, this Optima mat. It has the rough side and you've got this really short grassy side here. So I've hit a few balls off this and it seems to be really good. Um, you've got a tee hole here and this will accept any sort of rubber based tee. The ones that come with it feel pretty good. Not sure on their longevity, but they, they're ru real rubber material. And this rough as well, I'm assuming you hit with the grain, not against the grain, because that would sort of tear it out. But if you hit with the grain, it should um, form a nice rough feel, but not tear the grass out at all. 
nice solid rubber, quite heavy. So we'll give this a go and see how it runs as well. Okay, we're having a terrible day today. The camera keeps overheating for some reason and I lose, I'm not sure where I am on the footage. So I'm sorry if this is a little bit sporadic, but we'll try to get through this quickly, right? Before it overheats. So I've showed you the mat, I've showed you the net set up. I've hit a couple of balls, but they're gonna be cut out of this because um, it's just too, too all over the shop, this footage. But uh, the mat's feeling great to hit off. I've already hit a couple of balls. Uh, it's feeling great, it's wearing well. The net is awesome, it's nice and quiet. Uh, the balls aren't making a sound when they hit it. And it's definitely stopping the golf balls and doing the job. So you could even peg it down in each corner. You can see it jumps up a little bit as the balls hit. But if you pegged it down in each you know, far corner, uh, you could really calm that down and get a smooth, nice smooth, uh, you know, impact. So this is looking good. Another one with the seven iron. So it's definitely dealing with that well. Nice and. Uh, Nice and calm there. I'm going to step this up quickly and I'm going to hit a four iron. It's, it's quite a warm day today and the wind sock is on the camera. So I think it's just getting too hot in that foam wind sock because uh, there's a little bit of breeze as well. And I don't want to get that wind buffering. So okay, we'll hit the four iron. It's feeling good. So it's all these cheap nets as well that you end up paying a lot of money for. It might be okay if you're just starting out and you're a beginner. Because you have a slow ball speed, right? So that ball speed isn't, you know, smashing into this, this net. But as you can see, I've got a brick wall behind this net. And my ball speed isn't slow. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's not slow. And especially when I'm hitting, you know, driver and woods and so on. So you really want to make sure that the net you buy, even if it is a budget option, yeah, so you definitely need to peg that down. But uh, certainly, certainly working without being pegged down. But a couple of pegs there would be good, or weights, maybe sandbags, just to dump one on either side. Um, but when you've got a cheap net and you're hitting a wood into it, just hit this one, a bit skinny, see that mat is ramping up so you need, need a little bit of timber under this this mat, the four dollar mat, but if you're hitting a fast ball into a net you, you don't want it to go through the net and break your neighbour's window or hit your, hit your brick you know behind. Move that back a little bit. So this is performing really well for what it is. Very quiet. Quite impressed right now. So let's ramp this up. We'll get a three wood. So picking those off really clean. But this is definitely ramping up this mat, so piece of ply under there would make all the difference. So now pick it up off the, off the tight lie here with the three wood. So it was crushed. Got pretty straight that one. My, uh, my next step is to get like a Garmin R10 and do some um, little bit of feedback on where these balls are going, a bit of ball speed and so on. So that's the three wood. Now we're going to try a bit of a driver. Stretch this net out again. 
We'll throw our tea in. Give yourself a bit of space. Now these teas are quite high. You could always snip them back a little bit. But um, I tend to float my club head behind the ball anyway with the driver, so a bit of height doesn't worry me too much. But if it's too, too high, just give it a little snip with some scissors. A little bit off the top of the club. Could have been the high tee. But the net certainly stopped it. This is a great net. Doing exactly what a golf net should do. That was a bit high. So I definitely need to trim that tee a little bit as well. So I'm just getting it off the top of the club. That was much better. A bit more off the off the centre. So what we can take from this video is that this works, right? So having a, a fold-out clothesline that a lot of Australian homes have on these newer, you know, estate-style homes. Uh, jump onto Haverford, uh, the Haverford H A V E R F O R D website. Grab yourself one of these three meter by three meter nets. Uh, very good, solid, quality, quality product. Um, and, you know, with a couple of sandbags out either side here and, and over here, just to hold this net in, um, in position, it would be, it would be ideal, it would be perfect. Now this, uh, this $4 mat here, this is working really well for the feet to go on. And it just needs a little bit of, um, plywood or something, timber attached to the bottom with, uh, maybe some gel grip or, or carpet glue just to hold that down on the board and then it won't ramp up at all and for four dollars you can't really go wrong for four dollars it's a good good foot foot mat and it stops you tearing up it's been quite wet here at the moment so this has brought the moisture up but it stops you, your feet tearing up your lawn and then our, our golf hitting mat here this optimal one uh, this came from Rebel Sport and it was about $55, I've already thrown that price up anyway, but it seems like good value for now. So I'm gonna keep hitting balls off this now that I have this net. I didn't have this earlier, I was using a bit of a canvas drop sheet and that didn't work out at all, as you might be able to see from some of the footage that I threw up just then. Nah. Oh. It's painful. Holes going straight through that thing. It's a bit of a waste of money, actually, but uh, this is this is awesome. No holes going in this at all. It's definitely stopping the balls well. And uh, paired with this this practice mat and this foot mat, it'll be a total price of about 150, between 150 and 170, including the bit of ply for this and glue. This one being the cost it was, and this mat being, or this net being 99 dollars, and then postage. So. Definitely works, definitely a way to do it versus just buying a complete, you know, net and frame and so on. But yeah, this seems to work well. I'll keep using this over the next couple of months and I might do an update video, a bit of a long-term video on the quality of the mat and how long the net lasts. So yeah, there we go. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this helps you with making a decision on, uh, you know, maybe doing it this way as well. It seems to work well. Uh, I've got a fairly quick ball speed and this pulls it up nicely. So my normal drive goes uh, 270 to 290 metres. So it's, it's you know, fairly quick off the club face. And this is holding that ball up really well off the driver. So definitely recommend doing it this way. And I'll do a follow-up video in, in a few months and let you guys know how it's, how it's going. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Feel free to subscribe or like the, um, like the video, subscribe to the channel. There'll be more content coming up, so looking forward to, uh, to showing you more products. 
Thank you.